Are you ready for an open discussion with the best of the best and the best of what's next? Welcome to the Tony D'Urso Show. Join in on a great conversation today with some of the world's great influencers as they showcase great advice and techniques that made them the game changers they are today. Now, here's Tony D'Urso. Welcome, I'm your host, Tony D'Urso. I interview some of the most successful people in the world, and I thank you for joining us. This show is dedicated to helping you turn your vision into reality. And here's a successful entrepreneur who provides insights and guidance you can use to move along your vision path. Listen to my shows at TonyDURSO.com or go to your favorite podcast platform such as Apple Podcasts and search for Tony D-U-R-S-O. Now, before we get going, please stay tuned for an important message from our sponsor. Check out Masterclass. Now is the time to become the expert in the field of your interest. Listen for my story just ahead on what class I'm taking. And with an annual pass, you get a free one to share at masterclass.com slash D-U-R-S-O. More details just ahead, so please stay tuned. Today's show is about coronavirus and helping small businesses with Scott Omelianic. Let's see what we can learn today. And at the end of this interview, I'm going to do a summary recap of what we went over. So stay tuned for that. Here's some info on Scott. Scott Omelianic recently joined Inc. as Editor-in-Chief, where his responsibilities include developing new lines of business to serve the entrepreneurial community and overseeing the events and content that make up the Inc. ecosystem. Here we go. Hi, Scott. Welcome to the Tony D'Urso Show. So great to have you on with us today. Oh, my pleasure to be here, Tony. Thank you for having me. Oh, the honor is mine, Scott. You are such a consummate professional in entrepreneur world. It's amazing. I, I look forward to talking about the virus, its impacts, and how we can help small businesses. I've got a large audience in the entrepreneur world, small business owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs. We just, I just can't wait to jump into this. But before we do this, Scott, I'd love to follow your journey to success and actually want to introduce you to our audience Please tell us, how did it all start for you? What's your backstory? Um, you know, I have a background um, professionally in, in media, which includes uh, magazines and, and digital and television. And actually, that, that was sort of my default career. I had wanted to be an uh, artist, actually. I was a studio art major in, in college, and I had a very kind art history professor who one day came to me and said, you know, Scott, you're a much better writer than you are a painter. Maybe you should think about that. And I took it to heart. I gave up painting and, and, and went off, uh, worked as a carpenter for a while, but ultimately went to journalism school and found myself in New York. But I come from a family of entrepreneurs. And so I always had a entrepreneurial bent, I guess, to the way I approached my work and uh, ultimately did a bunch of interesting things in journalism that included working for such brands as GQ and Esquire. I ran This Old House, which you might be familiar with, which is a television show on PBS for 40 years now. And so I had a great success in that and uh, one day decided I needed to do something different. And that included uh, going off to be an entrepreneur myself. And uh, I was not as good at it as I wanted to be. That's surprising, Scott. You've done so well with the this old house, and you've really shown that you are a great entrepreneur, if I can say it that way. And I'm surprised that you didn't think you were an entrepreneur, and I'm also surprised that you didn't continue on in journalism. It's very interesting how different events change our path, and you know, some people you wouldn't think that they're the great chef that they are today. It's just it's just funny how we kind of seem to follow our calling. Did it start with a vision to help small businesses? How did you become so well known in the entrepreneurial world? How did this all come about? So, you know, what happened was that I did a lot of things in journalism that were firsts, right? When video didn't exist on the internet, we were one of the first brands when I was at this old house to put video on the internet. We had the first issue of a print magazine. This old house had a magazine as well that was created entirely out of user-generated content, another first. I used this entrepreneurial skill, and ultimately, we sold this old house to private equity, something that entrepreneurs uh, often face, right, an exit. 
And when I did that, I decided that I had spent 20 years in journalism. It was, it was time for something new. And I realized at the time that I, I was a good salesman for other people, not as good a salesman for myself. And as an entrepreneur, I think you have to be a terrific salesperson for yourself. I was uh, what I would consider an entrepreneur. I knew all the lessons, but I needed the support. Entrepreneurs have that in big companies. Entrepreneurs on their own don't. And entrepreneurship can be quite lonely. And I think I didn't have that piece of it. Very interesting. I think behind a vision that really takes off, there's a strong purpose, Scott. What was your purpose for what you do? So I, this is what I realized in this sort of interim period I spent. I started teaching uh, and I taught actually entrepreneurship and, and marketing at uh, a place called the Stevens Institute of Technology, a very good uh, business and technology school. And while I was doing that, I stumbled into a business, a startup that I, I worked on and have a patent ar- around. Um, but I realized that there was this connection from when I worked at this old house to when I was uh, a, a professor and I realized that the next step in my career had to include this. And, and that was the ability to facilitate for people. Uh, that I understood that sort of my purpose was to help people achieve things. And one day I got a phone call out of the blue asking if I would like to run Inc. Magazine, which is a famous magazine for entrepreneurs, a famous website. The Inc. 5000 recognizes the fastest growing 5,000 businesses in the country. And suddenly this media background that I used to have, this experience as an entrepreneur, and the understanding that my purpose was to help people achieve things, whether they thought it was possible or not, all sort of coalesced around this current opportunity. And it's been a remarkable privilege to do it, even in a very difficult time like we're facing now. We're talking about coronavirus and helping small businesses with Scott O. And you can find him at Inc.com. That's I-N-C.com. Yeah, it's that Inc. Scott, let's get into your vision path and how we can help small businesses and how you can help them through your magazine and so forth. We have some very interesting times right now. Businesses are heavily impacted. People that have even been successful at doing whatever they do in the small business all of a sudden... The supply chain is gone. The customers aren't there. It's kind of a mess and it's really bad. So let's take this a little bit one by one and start. How can we help these guys succeed to make it through these times? I think it is a a remarkable time. People like to say this is an unprecedented time. Of course, in history, we've faced these things before and and we've gotten through them. And I think a certain set of principles uh, always helps us through these things. And, And for me, as someone who wants to support entrepreneurs, I, I recognize that my, my role is to do everything I can in the job I have, but in, in my personal interest in, in supporting them. And so that, that's how I approach it. And, and the question I ask myself, which I think is an important one for anyone to ask is, what kind of world do you want to live in? And that might not be the world we have right now. I don't think anyone you know, wants to live in the world we, we have right now. It's, it's scary, frankly, to a lot of people. But on the other side of it, when things settle down, what kind of world do we want to live in? Do you want to live in a world where small business still exists, where Main Street still exists, where you can uh, get a job down the street, next town over, have a second career, all of those things that we've come to know? I think a lot of people do like that, right? Or, Or do you want to live in a world where there are only two or three retailers left, right? And, and their goods come to you in a box uh, delivered by a drone on, on your front step. Interesting, but I don't know that that's what I want. I want to be able to walk down my main street, have dinner someplace, have a drink someplace, buy a book at a bookstore, flowers at a flower store. And so I'd urge people to think about that, what kind of world they want to live in, and do whatever they can now, even in the heart of this crisis, to see that world come to fruition And so for me, what that means, for example, really simply is it's quite easy for me to go online and order something through my account at at that big retailer in Seattle. But um, maybe I should call the store down the street first. It's closed, but the guy who owns it is still there. And I can ask him if he has the product first. Maybe he can drop it off on his way home. And it'll cost me the same thing. And I'll have helped him 
pay his rent that month. I think that's an important thing. What kind of world do you want to live in? You know, we're all being pushed and corralled a little bit to this automaticity, this just pick up your keyboard, pick up your laptop, order, have it delivered to you. It almost seems as if the convenience is being pushed, but we're being distanced, whether we want to realize it or not, we're being so separated from others, yet it's that camaraderie, that hanging out with people, that meeting people that infuses us with passion, ideas, and so much. There's so much. We could spend a whole show just talking about that in itself. And the small businesses, though, they would very much appreciate that. And yes, even though their their storefront may be closed, yes, they're, of course, with the electronic age that we're in now, they will answer the phone, the phone will reach them, and they would love to provide something. In some of the earlier shows, we talked about ordering takeouts from different restaurants to keep them alive because what's going to happen, and it's already starting to, is the bigger companies, the bigger conglomerates are going to start gobbling up that business because the small ones, they don't have the the resources to last this whole long period and they're going to bail. So we do have to help them. And I really like that picture that you're painting. Yes, I'd love to be able to walk down the street and buy flowers. We used to buy fresh flowers literally every week for years. And now that I think about it, I am growing orchids. I love orchids, but there's been no fresh flowers with that fresh flower scent for some time. I miss that. And there's probably other things that we miss as well. Let's kind of take this apart a little bit more. And how can we kind of, it's sort of like the inertia is going one way. We kind of have to reverse it and push it back the other way. Let's go into some of these tips. If you want to say, how can we help them and how can we push this back? Sure. I think one thing, if you're, everyone's situation is different, obviously. And we know many people in America live paycheck to paycheck. And that's no different for small business owners, right? We're talking about people who are solopreneurs, not necessarily entrepreneurs, right? They're, they're not the next Silicon Valley billion dollar unicorn. We're talking about people with five and 10 employees, family businesses that have been around for a couple of generations. This is the Tony D'Urso Show, where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Just ahead, the chat continues about coronavirus and helping small businesses with Scott Omelianic. But first, it's time for us to take a short break. See you back here in just a moment. Find out what's happening on the Voice America Talk Radio Network. Find out about new shows, featured guests, and what's up this week. Find us on Facebook by searching keyword Voice America. Hey guys, am I having a blast taking classes for Masterclass or what? It's a whole new level of learning with world-class experts teaching just about anything you want. Masterclass lets you learn from the best with exclusive access to online classes taught by masters of their craft. You can learn... The Art of Negotiation from Chris Voss, improve your storytelling skills from Neil Gaiman, or learn self-made entrepreneurship from Sarah Blakely. With over 80 different instructors across tons of categories, there's literally something for everyone. Whether you're interested in TV writing, game design, investigative journalism, or French pastry fundamentals, there's a masterclass for you. Really, there is. There's over 80 exclusive classes taught by the masters you know and love. And yes, you know most of these experts as they are household names. I'm working on the art of negotiation from Chris Voss. He spent 24 years of service with the FBI. Often he was the lead international kidnapping negotiator. I'd love to interview him sometime. In one of the lessons, Chris plays actual footage of a hostage situation where a bank robber has taken hostages at a Chase Manhattan bank, a robbery which has gone wrong. Chris trains us on techniques in his class and stops the tape at various places and identifies what he was doing. Yeah, he was actually in that negotiations with the bank robbers. This is extremely interesting stuff that you can use in the boardroom and during negotiations. It's not that there are hostages, but that you learn how to read the person on the other side of the table and how you can get them to tell you more of what's going on and be truthful with you. You know this all too well. It seems too many deal makers think they're poker players, and they don't want to give up key information. I am so done with that in the corporate world. I really don't know where that all started. Now, with the understanding that Chris gives in this class, 
you actually change the playing field and put yourself in a stronger controlling position, all while being nice, friendly, and helpful. You got to check this out. I've learned about mirroring and labeling, just those two steps, and you can learn so much from a person without ever asking a question. That's right, no questions. Well, kind of. And without giving out any information about yourself. I know I've talked about this before. I'm going through the class again and working on getting some practice. I'm eager to talk to more people. I've already used the labeling very successfully when I've run into people who complained or didn't act so nice. Wow, this really handled it. If all you did was learn how to mirror and label, it would be worth the price of admission. You guys got to check this out. Chris knows his stuff and he's a foremost expert on negotiating. He's brilliant. The master classes are arranged in simple, short cinema class videos that teach one subject for a few minutes. There are practical examples on how to use that new skill. Along with this, there's a workbook that is simple, concise, and to the point. And to top it off, there's a community and it's huge just on that class. You can start a new thread or join a thread about something you may have a question on or want to know more about. This community is very engaging. I was impressed at the quality and detail of questions, answers, and comments. All right, guys, listen up. Buy one annual masterclass all access pass for yourself and get one free to share. Go to masterclass.com slash D-U-R-S-O to get started with this limited offer. That's masterclass.com slash D-U-R-S-O. And I'll spell that M-A-S-T-E-R-C-L-A-S-S dot com slash D-U-R-S-O. All right, guys, check it out. Sign up and tell me how much you love it. You're listening to The Tony D'Urso Show with special VIP guests. Now, back to Tony and his guest. All right, we're back on The Tony D'Urso Show where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Let's see what we can learn today. Today's show is about coronavirus and helping small businesses with Scott Omelianic. At the end of this interview, I'll give you a summary of what I got out of this and I'll share some pointers with you. Stay tuned for that. Trained as a journalist, motivated by business, and excited by technology, Scott's passion is a disruptive, do-it-first approach that generates revenue by connecting consumers with content and services. He's built opportunity for marquee brands across verticals and platforms, including desktop and mobile web, television, print, and digital books, and magazines, social media, and other brand extensions. All right, and now back to the chat with Scott. I... Uh, I'm fortunate that um, I have a good job. It, I'm, I'm still employed, right? I, I do okay. I have, um, from my past, I mentioned I worked at GQ. I picked up a bit of a clothing habit there, right? So I have a tailor who, who I'm quite fond of. And he has two people in his shop. And I know there's no one going into the shop now. We're not supposed to leave our homes where we live. So his shop certainly isn't open and no one is wearing suits. They're wearing sweatpants, but I called him knowing that I would have some clothes, some that are actually in his shop and some that I were, was about to bring to his shop. And, and, and I said, look, Nelson, let me pay you for this work now. I, I know you'll do it. We'll get through this. I'll need to wear pants out of the house. Let me pay you for this now. And, and that way, I won't have to worry about paying you later. And you'll have money for the rent, right? So all of us can do some small version of that, I think. That's, that's one thing, you know pay for work you know that is going to happen now. It can make a huge difference to a small business that each week struggles to make its payroll. I like that. That's very good. Let's have some more, please. You know, uh, other other things, uh, we've seen people, uh, we actually at, at work at Inc. Magazine, we have a virtual cocktail hour. Um, and, and so, you know, we all... Uh, order from various liquor stores and believe it or not we have a a, a small expense account to do that don't don't tell my boss um, okay and we, i won't say anything we have a, a virtual cocktail party right because we can't have one in real life when you might out, go out for a drink with someone but we order from the local liquor store which delivers so it's not a problem again um and it keeps that economy going and actually you know it's a really useful psychological tool for yourself, right? To create some sort of regular thing that's enjoyable. Uh, we, a lot of us have regular things right now that aren't so enjoyable, right? There's a lot of monotony being uh, quarantined. 
a lot of staring at four walls for some people, but to get past that to the fun regular thing is, is kind of nice, right? Yes. And just a little side comment to that for those that find themselves with a lot of time on their hands, you probably could go one way and say, great time to work on the house and do projects. But this is a great time to pick up something that may be a passion of yours that has probably been set aside and stomped on and pushed away and because you had to go make money and survive. But this may be a time to pull out some of those things that you really love to do. For example, for me, I love radios and I've actually been taking a a radio class on doing ham radio and, and I find it amazing and I have so much work to do and so much to study. There's just not enough time in the day to get through it all. So that's just one way. There's reading. There's so many great books to read yeah, or, you know, or write a book. There's so many projects. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there, there are a lot of online courses now that have been made uh, free um, or, or at, at a reduced cost, right? So you could get a certificate program uh, for, for your work. Um, you could uh, learn a language. I think Rosetta Stone, for example, right now uh, is offering its software free. There's so, so many things you can do if you just take the time, right? We can't just sit in the t- in front of the TV all day or move from our computer where we're working all day, if we're lucky enough to still be working at home, to the TV. There are other things that are important to do, and it is a, a great time to, to develop those other skills. And you don't have to just do it, again, with the big companies. You know, Places like there are lots of learning outlets that that individual people, having been a professor, I know this, right? Individual people uh, make courses available and, and you can buy those courses and you're helping, again, some, some person who's a solopreneur out and, and not just a big company, not just paying another Netflix subscription. Exactly. And you brought up a great point before we hopped on the show about continuing to work out and continuing to exercise, even though we're kind of staying at home quite a bit. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think, you know, and, and this is this is true, uh, going back to when I was an entrepreneur, I knew that I had energy, that I had to burn off frustration, anxiety, all of those things, things that we're all feeling now in different ways. And I think some measure of exercise is incredibly important for that. I, I also, uh, it helps me to meditate. Um, and I, I do that now. And I think I get through the day in a way and get a better night's sleep and and most importantly, I'm kinder to my family, <laughs> who who I've I've seen every minute of every day for the last month and a half now, right? So that's kind of important, and, and it doesn't matter. Again, right? Just just um, you know, in my experience, just doing the least little bit of exercise, walking up and down the stairs, doing sit ups with your feet under the sofa, it doesn't matter. Maybe it's not your traditional workout. Maybe it's not your nightly after dinner walk you used to take. But there's something there that you can do that can just get a little of that energy out. Absolutely. And we all, of course, are all bonding more with our friends and family like never before. I think that social opportunity has gone through the roof. And I believe we're going into a whole new evolution of of society where those original roots of camaraderie, of family, that have been lost or disappearing or waning over the years with the advent of the Internet and everything else electronic. I think that's all coming back now. And I'm really interested to see what the future holds because it's something we haven't seen for, who knows, 100 years. It's like going backwards. We're becoming more and more social with a tighter family. I, I think there's an interesting thing in that we can, you know, use technology to isolate ourselves from people or we can use technology to get closer to people. That, that's a choice, right? I have an eight-year-old son. And uh, my father-in-law is, is a cyclist, and he has an exercise bike at home. Uh, my son has a little bike, too. I propped it up so the axle of the back wheel was on a milk crate, and we set up the computer and went to FaceTime. And my father-in-law took out his phone and put it on his exercise bike. And he and my son, so he and his grandson, had a conversation for a half hour while they both rode their bicycles uh, in front of each other. And it was a delightful moment because he had this, my son had this great bonding uh, with his grandfather. My grandfather was happy to see his grandson. And they both got their exercise, right? 
and technology made that possible. So, so there, are, there, are, there are ways we can use technology to our benefit as people, not just as our uh, as a benefit to the technology companies, if you will. Um, and, and I think that, that that's an example. Absolutely. And you mentioned stairs earlier, and I'd like to comment. There's a place not far from us which has a lot of stairs. And just last night when, when my wife came home, we went out and we walked the stairs and just walked all the way up. And it's very simple. You don't need anything else but just get out there and just and just find something that you can do that will keep your body going. Because you need that because we are sitting a little bit too much these days. Yeah, there's no question about that. And I think a lot of simple things like that are, are, are becoming important. I was talking to an entrepreneur the other night who owns a cookware business. And believe it or not, his business is one of the lucky few that has grown exponentially um, uh, since, since the advent of COVID, right? Because people are staying home and cooking. But again, this is a, a choice people are exploring. His business in particular is about uh, ethnic cookware of all different kinds. So people have the opportunity, much like we talked about learning a language or taking a course before, we can cook the same slop that we eat every night of the week, or we have the opportunity to make it an event and to try something different. And in doing so, you know, by ordering through this entrepreneur or through someone else, getting your food from a local place rather than a big grocery chain or a delivery service, again, all helpful to the entrepreneur. I like that. And in different parts of the world, different parts of the country, we're really locked down, literally not allowed to go anywhere without a slip. In France, you need a slip to go to the store. In England, you need a slip to go out. In India, you can't even walk out of your house right now to go to the front of your property outside. There's different rules or protocols throughout the world. And I have some friends that a family member is just a couple miles away, but could not even get together and congregate for a birthday party. So there are things that are a little bit, we don't like them. So uh, one thing you've mentioned before is have a Zoom party. And I thought that was very interesting. Families could get together. And even if you can't physically go see each other, throw everybody up on a Zoom or FaceTime or something like that. Absolutely. And I, and I think it's, it's important. And it, it, it does, you know, it does speak to, I think, our, our social need, right? Everyone feels better after a situation like that. And it'll be very interesting to see how we behave when this is over. And, and, and I do think to some extent we're going to recognize the importance of, of social interaction, that, that getting out of our house and away from the television set for a while is actually a nice thing. And having a conversation with a stranger is a remarkable thing because we haven't been able to do that. And I think we'll have, um, I hope we'll have a greater appreciation, right? Like everyone says that we wish things would return to normal. This is the Tony D'Urso Show where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Just ahead, the check continues about coronavirus and helping small businesses with Scott Omelianic. But first, it's time for us to take a short break. See you back here in just a moment. Now you don't have to stay linked to your desktop or laptop. Take Voice America on the go and listen anywhere. Get our mobile app for iPhone, BlackBerry, or Android at the Apple iTunes App Store, BlackBerry App World, or Android Market. Hey guys, now is not the time to overpay for razors at the drugstore. Harry's knows sometimes it's better to stay inside. That's why they ship directly to you so you can experience the quality of a Harry's shave in just a few days from the convenience of your own home. I've been using Harry's razors and accessories for years now. Really, the prices are very low and actually negligible. The razor blades seem to last forever and always give a close shave for a very long time. I love their products. The shave gel has aloe and that's good for your skin too. And also, when you use the shave gel, you only need a little dab to shave a large area. Try a small amount and see how much it lathers. It's very impressive. I get a much closer shave using their gel as opposed to someone else's soap or lather. Check it out, guys. I want you to join the 10 million who have tried Harry's. Claim your special trial offer by going to harrys.com slash D-U-R-S-O. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com slash D-U-R-S-O. Harry's is a return to the essential 
quality, durable blades at a fair price, just two bucks per blade. They've cut out the middleman, manufacturing blades in their German blade factory that's been honing precision blades for a century, which means you get incredibly high quality blades at factory direct prices. Harry's is super convenient. Blade refills are delivered directly to your door on your schedule, with or without a subscription. And you can feel good about your purchase. 100% quality guarantee. If you don't love your shave, let them know and they'll give you a full refund. And 1% of the proceeds are set aside for nonprofit organizations devoted to helping provide access to better health care for men and veterans. Listeners of my show can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash D-U-R-S-O. You'll get a weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip, five-blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated, and a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy to grab on the go. Go to harrys.com slash D-U-R-S-O to start shaving better today. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com slash D-U-R-S-O to start shaving better today. All right, guys, check it out, sign up, and tell me how much you love it. You're listening to The Tony D'Urso Show with special VIP guests. Now, back to Tony and his guest. All right, we're back on The Tony D'Urso Show where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Let's see what we can learn today. Today's show is about coronavirus and helping small businesses with Scott Omelianic. At the end of this interview, I'll give you a summary of what I got out of this and I'll share some pointers with you. Stay tuned for that. All right. And now back to the chat with Scott. We have a choice about what normal is. Broadly, we understand what normal is. But we have a choice to keep some things different. And some of those things might be having more concern for your employees if you're a manager, right? I I have every night of the week, I send an email to a different employee asking them how they're doing, um, if they need anything, if they're holding up on their own. Um, that doesn't have to stop that kind of behavior. The generosity I would show towards someone, right? I live in a, one of those places where we're not supposed to leave the house. Um, we're encouraged, strongly encouraged to say and stay inside. Uh, the generosity I show toward the delivery person doesn't need to change afterwards, right? We have some choices in how we live our lives. Like I said before, what kind of world do we want to live in? And, and so by taking advantage of this terrible time in a way, it's actually taking advantage of it and examining our lives and how we live our lives, we have the potential to live a much richer one afterwards. Scott, so many of us have a landlord, a mortgage, we have to pay our rent. What ideas or advice could you give for landlords, mortgage companies, and so forth? Yeah, there are a lot of a lot of uh, of advice like this applies actually to businesses and to individuals too. And, and the the biggest one I would say is, and it's easy to because we all have various degrees of anxiety around money, but it's really important now more than ever actually to pay attention to your money and to have in advance conversations you need to have about your ability to pay. You know, recognize that I've got one month's rent left. I've got two months rent left. Whatever it is, do that now before the money is out because it'll be much easier to have that conversation with the landlord about, you know, can I pay half the rent now and catch up over the next 12 months or something like that than just saying one day, oh, uh, by the way, I got nothing. Good points. Very good points. And I think also the pressure is there on banks and landlords to to acquiesce, to be lenient, to to help out. And because we're all in this together, there's no him and her. We're all together trying to survive and do better. And, and I think that there's more awareness on that. I think that's an important point, right? We can behave in a way that is zero sum and some people are going to get cut off at the knees and left you know, on their own, or we can behave in a way that we all sort of sacrifice a little bit, but everyone gets to the other side. And I personally would like the situation in which we all sacrifice a little bit and everyone gets to the other side. Scott, there are stimulus checks that have been promised. Some people have gotten them. Some people I know 
haven't gotten them, how would you recommend or advise an entrepreneur in that scenario to deal with that when it comes, if it comes? Yeah, I, th- I think this is a really difficult situation because there's been so much, uh, or, or there's been actually a lack of information, I sh- should say, on on when to expect checks. You know, the law says 10 days, but that's not necessarily happen. Banks have run out of money. The good news is is that uh, Congress just passed another stimulus bill, a smaller three hundred and some odd million dollar package that I think will help a lot of f- folks. One important thing, and I don't mean to be self serving at all, but every Friday, Inc. dot com and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce hold a national town hall webinar to talk about these very topics. And this Friday, we'll be talking about the new stimulus check, what to do if you haven't received yours yet, and and provide uh, some solutions from people that are policymakers, that are legal experts, that are HR experts, um, our, our journalists, and people from the Chamber of Commerce. And I'd really encourage people to listen to that because I, I think it's a tremendous value. And people who are far more expert on this topic uh, will be able to help answer your questions. I like that. So every Friday we go, we can go to Inc.com and where can we navigate to find yeah, the so town hall uh, meeting? Go to Inc.com. There's a, a story on the homepage you'll see to register for, for the town hall. You can do that. It's uh, Friday at, at noon Eastern and we will do at least uh, five more of them uh, and we'll likely do them until it's not needed. And, you know, hopefully they're not needed soon, but we'll be there every week answering those questions. Sounds good. Noon Eastern every Friday. And then you're you're all good because my show comes out every 5 p.m. Eastern every Friday. So <laughs> you, have, you have plenty of time not to be self-serving. <laughs> and, and by the way, you can also, we, we record it so you can watch over the weekend. So if you're very excited for Tony and you can't think about anything else, all day, <laughs> you can just wait, listen to Tony and then come to Inc. on the weekend. There you go. Well, that, that's very good public service that you offer to the, to the world, to the entrepreneurs at large and so forth. That is very good. Yeah. Scott, for small businesses, middle-sized businesses, entrepreneurs, any other types of grants or perks or anything else that you know f- from all your experience that entrepreneurs can do to get them through this? They could have been in the middle of a project that's now like has to be refunded or resources have to be put together. It's hard to think of everything, but surely want to really try to give as much value as we can to them. Yeah, absolutely. There is obviously the big government-led stimulus, but there are also state-level opportunities, the funding available, citywide funding available. Some local business associations are are making money available. There's a a, a website that helps small women and minority-owned businesses called Hello Alice, that has a number of $50,000 grants available. Even the big companies like Facebook and Google uh, have pledged to, to make hundreds of millions of dollars available to small businesses. They understand in a way we've talked about before, even though they're big businesses, that small businesses are the lifeblood of this country. So there are more programs out there. They take some looking. We try again to track them at ic.com and, and, and keep track of them. But they change every day, and new ones come online. Others go offline because they've used up the money. The important thing, again, I, I can't stress this enough, is to be proactive. Don't wait until it's too late, whether that means don't wait until it's too late to have a conversation with your creditors. Don't wait until it's too late to send out invoices for people who owe you money. Uh, don't wait till it's too late even to think about how your business might have to change entirely because of the way the world has changed. All the planning that you can do now ultimately will benefit you down the road. And I have to say, you know, entrepreneurs are creative, gutsy people to begin with, right? So this is a situation in which it might be unfamiliar to you, but if you've built a successful business already, you sort of have the internal drive to do whatever it takes to to get to the next place with a little luck. And, you know, frankly, luck is going to be a little bit of this. Not everyone will come out the other side with their business intact, unfortunately. So true. Scott, we're seeing small businesses, of course, just kind of hold up and kind of stop depending on what they serve and if it's something that can be useful at this time. And mid-sized businesses, we're seeing 
that decision where they're putting their employees on furlough, they're just letting them go, where perhaps they could keep them on a little bit and give them some smaller amount of salary, but it's just so hard. It's, it's, these are very, very tough choices to make. What's your take on keeping the employees on with some income as opposed to just you're off indefinitely could for until this thing blows over? Yeah, I, I think this is a decision each business has to make on its own based on a couple of things, right? Um, obviously, cash on hand is important, but that employee is important to you too, especially in small businesses where we have even more significant relationships with the people who work for us than in larger businesses. How long did it take you to find that person? How long will it take you to find a replacement if that person goes off and finds another job before you're back on your feet? Does it actually make sense? Is it actually cost effective for you to pay that person half salary, even if they're not working because the time to find a new employee, the time to train that new employee, all will end up costing you more than that payment to that person now. Those are some of the things to consider. There are legal issues too, right? Laying someone off is different from furloughing somebody where generally speaking, you get to keep your health insurance and other benefit packages. So each company really has to make this decision on their own. And again, I can't stress it enough, you know, doing it with the right, you know, legal and, and tax and, and accounting help and doing it in advance before it's too late while you still have time to maneuver. And Scott, what about the customers and all this? The customers of the small business owner or the mid-sized businesses that would receive offers, coupons, newsletters, whatever. What happens there? Yeah, I think, you know, as a customer, you know the places that are important to you, like we talked before. And and I think actually sometimes, and we've talked about entrepreneurship being a lonely business, you know, you've got a lot riding on your shoulders. Um, sometimes... All it takes to help someone get through this is just a little bit of acknowledgement. You know, just sending a postcard or a note or an email or leaving a phone message at the shops that you used to frequent saying, we haven't forgotten you and we can't wait to come back can mean a lot, right? It, it, it gives the entrepreneur hope that struggling now will be worth it because people valued what they did and they're going to come back because they valued what you did. Scott, I so much appreciate you giving so much advice and commenting and talking about helping the entrepreneur, small business owner, and so forth. Really appreciate that. I want to do a little shift here into Inc. Magazine. What you can do there as the editor. What are you guys planning to do in the next couple of years? And how do current events play out in this? Yeah, you know, I think uh, I, I actually came to Inc. just a few months ago with big plans to launch a lot of new businesses for Inc. that I thought would benefit the entrepreneurial community. I did not expect this, right, as most people. But I have to say it's been an utter privilege to run Inc. at this time, a time that it, to me is brand defining, right? It, it's sort of like what, um, what Watergate was to Woodward and Bernstein in the Washington Post. I feel like this crisis is to Inc. We've had the opportunity to step up, provide incredible information, to the entrepreneurial community, listen to them, help them set up these webinars. T uh, tomorrow, actually, uh, we uh, will have Mark Cuban on to do a webinar, the, the famous shark from Shark Tank, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, what his advice is. We're doing these almost every day of the week, not to make money because we're not making money off of these right now, but to help the community. And I think that's the most important thing. And ultimately, that, that is Inc.'s purpose, right? The, the Inc. exists to support the entrepreneur, to give them the information, the inspiration, and most importantly, the recognition uh, that they are important to the American economy, that they are important to American innovation, that we are who we are because of American small business. And we'll continue to do that no matter what happens. This is the Tony D'Urso Show, where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Just ahead, the chat continues about coronavirus and helping small businesses with Scott Omelianic. But first, it's time for us to take a short break. See you back here in just a moment. Find 
out what's happening on the Voice America Talk Radio Network by keeping up with us on Twitter. You can find us at Voice America TRN. Hey guys, short and sweet. Would you like to quickly create beautiful sales funnels that convert your visitors and leads and then customers? And without having to hire or rely on a tech team? Well, say no more. ClickFunnels is here. It's changing the lives of entrepreneurs and it's changed mine too. Start your free 14-day trial now. Start building your first funnel right now and join the 101,000 plus entrepreneurs who are actively using ClickFunnels to easily get their products and their message out to the world. Yeah, really, over 101,000 entrepreneurs are using ClickFunnels now. So start your free 14-day trial now. Start building your first funnel right now at TonyDURSO.com slash click. That's TonyDURSO.com slash click to start your free 14-day trial now, today. And start building your first funnel today. TonyDURSO.com slash C-L-I-C-K. Check it out, sign up, and tell me how much you love it. You're listening to The Tony D'Urso Show with special VIP guests. Now, back to Tony and his guest. All right, we're back on The Tony D'Urso Show where you can learn from the wisdom and success of others to help you move on your vision path. Let's see what we can learn today. Today's show is about coronavirus and helping small businesses with Scott Omelianic. At the end of this interview, I'll give you a summary of what I got out of this and I'll share some pointers with you. Stay tuned for that. After his tenure at this old house, Scott moved into the entrepreneurial world, consulting with startups, joining the board of the MIT Enterprise Forum, and serving as entrepreneur in residence at the Stevens Institute of Technology, where he taught a class on innovation and entrepreneurship. He's also co-founder of HumanConsult.io, where he created the Quid C methodology, a combination of rapid ideation, the lean canvas, and transformation management to help businesses in transition develop strategic plans, branding, marketing, investment thesis, and digital transitions. And now back to the chat with Scott. You're very successful as an entrepreneur, as we've covered quite a bit. What personal habits have helped you contribute to that success of here you are accomplishing your vision? It would be nice to say that there's one or two or three simple things, but 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 I think it's more for me. It's been more complicated than that. Um, and and I, I think the one of the fundamentals is curiosity and curiosity about the world around me, and, and more importantly, the people in the world around me. Understanding and having empathy for them, understanding what their challenges are, what is useful to them, what's not, what problems do they encounter, what could be better for them. I think there's so much material around us. It's about opening your eyes and sort of letting it in. And then for me, it's asking the question, what if? What if this were different? What if I talked to Tony today? What if I wake up tomorrow and decide we're going to do this kind of story for the entrepreneur? Asking that question, what if, can open up um, so many doors of opportunity. What if we do things entirely differently? Not because we have to, but because... Maybe we'll discover something really interesting if we do. And that something interesting will lead us down an entirely new path. I'm a big believer in asking the question, what if? I like that. And I encourage our audience to stay in touch with Inc.com and definitely attend those Friday chats, uh, your daily podcast as well. And get connected because a lot of great resources and a lot of very intelligent and able and successful people are there and being interviewed. And there's, it's just a plethora of advice and help and tips and suggestions. So I encourage all of you out there to just connect up more with Inc.com and just put it on one of your things to do at least once a week and go through and absorb this. Before we go, are there, and I actually want to talk more about this too, because I want to ask you about any great resources to share with our audience success squad. And here we can actually dive into some of the great resources at Inc. Magazine as well. Oh, I I think, you know, for for, for me, um, like I said before, just my greatest resource is curiosity and the fact that all the information in the world is is at my fingertips and just being willing to explore it and being open to new things. At at Inc., you're right, I think we have incredible 
uh, resources for entrepreneurs. We do have this webinar series every Friday, the National Town Hall on the Economy. We have other webinars throughout the week with successful entrepreneurs, people who once were just like all the rest of us who hit it big, like Mark Cuban, like Jean-Paul DeJoria, the owner of Patron Liquor, Sarah Blakely coming up, who is the founder of Spanx, a billionaire herself. Um, really interesting people contributing to the conversation, offering advice on what they would do in a similar situation, how to bootstrap, how to negotiate, how to get uh, a pivot happening for your company. All of these things we provide, that's why we exist to serve uh, the American entrepreneur, to serve a small small business, that, that founder down the street who puts in too many hours. She works too hard uh, not to be recognized. That's uh, That's what we're here for. Once again, we've been talking about the current situation that we're in with the coronavirus and how to help small businesses with Scott Omlianek, also known as Scott O, and you can find him at Inc.com. Scott, thank you so much. We've covered so much. I want to thank you and I want to thank all that you do at Inc.com to help us and help entrepreneurs because it's the entrepreneur that's going to help turn things around because that's where it all started from is that entrepreneur. All the great businesses that you see today all had entrepreneurs at the beginning. And that's where I think we're going to be able to pull out of this. You're absolutely right, Tony. And thank you so much for having me. Hey, Success Squad. Thanks for hanging out with me while I featured an elite entrepreneur who took his vision to reality. I hope this was as inspiring for you as it was for me to do this interview. I learned so much. The insights are so valuable. So how did you like it? Coronavirus and helping small businesses with Scott Emilianik. I like how Scott had the wisdom to accept the advice of his art professor in college and go into journalism. The rest is history, as they say. You know, it takes guts to follow good advice and switch to a different career path. It's not always a path of what your passion is, but it's usually a path of what you're good at. I know of others who have made very successful changes. Are you really good at what you're doing in your business? And are you in tune to a better path? If anyone tries to honestly help you, food for thought. Scott brings up a great point that as an entrepreneur, you have to be a terrific salesperson for yourself. Yeah, we can all be great working for other people and companies. They are often very structured and often there's a lot of support to help make that sale. But are you really good at selling your own wares? That's a higher sales level indeed. It's a must for the entrepreneur. I love his purpose of the ability to facilitate for people, to help people achieve things, whether they thought it was possible or not. I love his thought process of how to deal with our current times. It all depends on your answer to this. What kind of world do you want to live in? Not that anyone likes what's going on, but when it all settles down, what kind of world do you want to live in? I really love the picture he paints and recommend you listen to this again, and this time, Write down what is your ideal world. What is your vision for this world? Really, what would you like to see in it? And you know, if a ton of people would write down what they really want to see in this world and reflect and look upon it, guess what? It could very well come true. And that's what I'm counting on. I think if thousands of you out there listening to this wrote down your ideal vision for this world and focused on it, that we really and truly could help bring it together. You guys can change the whole thought process that's going on right now. This is that powerful. Scott rolls out great idea after idea on how to help other businesses during these tough times. Please make notes of them and help out if you can. I think by all of us working together, we can make a significant impact on the businesses around us, strengthen our bonds, and get a better grip on our sanity. And we all sure need that. I don't think I've heard this one before. Scott says working out regularly makes him feel kinder. While humorous, there's a bit of truth to that. Do you notice the difference in your mood when you work out regularly as opposed to when you don't? Is there a correlation here? Do you find that it helps when you're cooped up in your house more often and trying to survive at your business while family is at home too? I'd like to know what you think. There's so much more I got out of this interview. What did you get? I'd love to know how you use this information to help you in your business or career. Reach out to me. Now, grab hold of your vision. Decide you're either going to start something great or take it to the next level. You have to decide first. 
It always starts with a decision, and you can get my vision map to help you along the process. The free ebook is at TonyDURSO.com. I created my empire in just a few years. That's all it took. I had the vision map as my guide. I wrote it up. You can do it too. And once again, check out all my shows on Spotify, all designed to help you get to the next level in your business or career. Let's help you move on your journey to success. And if you have Apple Podcasts, look up my name, Tony D-U-R-S-O, and subscribe to my show. A kind review there will get you tremendous appreciation back in return. Thanks and remember, just take action. Success awaits those who persevere and remain steadfast despite the odds. Sow good seeds, do good deeds, and join me on the next episode of The Tony D'Urso Show. We hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of the Tony D'Urso Show with his key influencers. Be sure to tune in again next Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Influencers Channel. 